All right, so the deadliest mistakes that you can make as a software developer. So for every X engineers out in the world, I feel there are 4X people who are sitting on the sidelines wanting to learn how to code. And in this video, I want to talk about the common pitfalls that come in this journey. And all of this comes from some very personal experiences of friends and family who have always wanted to code, but weren't able to get into coding ever. Let's get right into it. Point number one, the need to be spoon fed everything. This comes from a personal experience. I have a friend who has paid like 80,000 rupees to an instructor for a one-on-one -on -one, one year long program and she told me one day ki, I was very angry at my instructor because he did not teach me how to put gradients as a background color she's still at css after six months by the way and he told me how to put a color but you know one day i wanted to make a website and the requirement there was a gradient so i asked him sir ye aapne se nahi. you did not teach me this and i was like yeah that's probably not for him to teach right there's so many variations of things you can do in css and if you know how to put a background color it is probably easier for you to google how to put a background gradient than whine about this to him and to me so it'll probably take you less time to just google what you're stuck at than you know whining about Kare, ye to cheez miss ho gayi. and there will be be things that will be missed in your programming journey especially if you're being instructor led so make sure as soon as you can eject out of being spoon fed the better that way you know your, your actual journey begins then when you can learn how to google a bit brings me to point number two deferring the difficult bits another reason i feel she's still stuck at css after six months is because she does not want to start javascript she's like oh no i understand css a little bit so let me get into the depths of css and understand every corner of it the problem here is as a developer in a real company which is your goal in the end right to get a job no one's writing css that to this much and that to like throughout your day maybe one hundredth of your time goes in writing css most of your time will go in writing the main application logic which will be in java javascript whatever your primary language is so you should spend more time there i think she's been deferring it because that's the real difficult bit right that's the thing you actually have to do and she does not want to touch that yet because she's like okay let's stay on the sidelines for a bit and you know spend our time doing this easy bit to defer the hard bit this brings me to the third point which is an amalgamation of the first two points which is spend your time where you will be spending your time eventually if a real developer in a real company is spending their time writing javascript logic you should do the same i think both point one and point two happen because people want to defer the difficult bits here is an example look at this code on the screen and look at the first two lines and the last line this is something you will always see in a project these will always be in an express code base and look at the thousand lines in the middle you don't have to understand any of this by the way my point is that these thousand lines is where a lot of code has been written the three lines is where your server has been bootstrapped where do you think you should spend your time? If you have five hours in your day, should you spend them writing those thousand lines? Or should you spend them worrying about the first three lines? KR, what does this do? How does this work under the hood? Why is the syntax like this? The answer is a thousand lines because that's where most of your application logic is written. And when you join a company, let's say Swiggy, what are you writing? These thousand lines. What are you not writing? What's already present there and bootstrapped? It's these three lines. These three lines give you a bunch of functionality for you to work on top of, which is what you have to write when you join a company, which is where a bug will come when you join a company. The first three lines is where I've seen a lot of people be like, Nene, let's get into the depths of why, you know, this thing was called app.listen and not app.screen. What does listen even mean? Or, you know, what is express or what is an HTTP server? It is good to know this. The problem comes when, you know, you want to spend a lot of time here to defer the bit in the middle. In the end, these three lines is something you can copy paste or most probably if you're joining a company, these three lines are already there. You will be spending your time writing the routes the real core logic which is different for you know swiggy or zomato or uber which is where you should be spending your time once you get into that mode there's no going back you will understand how you know silly it is to spend too much time learning how gradients work or you know how an express server works under the hood there's like you can get into the into the depths of libraries but then why don't you get into the depths of languages you can always argue okay why is the code const a equal to one and not constant a equal to one it's just the choice of the developer of that language similarly the syntax that's needed to bootstrap any application is something that the application developer has written you can always read through the code bases of these libraries a lot of good developers in very big companies have never read this code base they understand these lines let you bootstrap your project they also understand a little bit what they do under the hood and that's all where do they spend their time writing these thousand lines of code the same place where you should be spending your time if you would just for one second you know spend a lot of time writing real code which is something people want to defer people don't want to you know bang their keyboards and you know want a very uh let me follow along what's happening on the screen that's where the problem comes i think when you reach the point of okay give me the high level of what this library does and start coding it yourself is when your learning curve will peak all right brings us to point number four i've already talked about this practicing yourself unless you're practicing a lot yourself coding yourself if you really want to just follow along an instructor or a lot of times i've seen people just you know okay code for me in a video i understand everything 
good to go and just close the video if you follow that path you're not learning everything i'd argue even if you're following along with an instructor he's coding and you're following along same thing in the end you have to write code yourself so start practicing code yourself you don't have to do it the first time first time follow along second time follow along a little bit third time try to code the complete thing yourself if you're still not able to again follow along but the fourth time at least start to memorize the syntax a little bit if you keep googling and you know keep following tutorials you'll never be able to code really well all right fifth point this is super important and very surprising that i have to say this you should learn to google Google and chat GPT a bit. This came after, you know, someone said, I had a one-on-one -on -one call with someone and he said, sir, huh, uh, are you going to teach everything? If you teach everything, if I, if you, in this course, I've, I'll be, by the end, do I have everything? And I said, probably not. Uh, you know, we're learning React, let's say, and what if your project is in Angular, which is something even I don't know, I have never learned. Then no, that is not being covered. And similarly, a lot of things will get missed in a course, in a cohort, in your own learning on YouTube. You have to learn how to Google, especially, you know, if you're running through a problem, you should not run to a teaching assistant or you know your brother or some other mentor to tell you what the solution is once you learn to google and you know solve your problems yourself is when you're that's the starting point of being a developer i mean pair coding is sort of a myth you never really sit with someone who's solving your problems in a company you're solving your problems yourself and trust me all of them are just a google away whatever issue you are facing 99.9 percent .9 some other developer has faced the same issue in the past if you google it you will find the very first result on a stack overflow and today even better you can ask an ai either Either way the solution is out there this is not the first time someone has faced this problem there is a solution on google you should google it do not depend on humans else you'll always be stuck dependent on humans next point complete dependency on a single video a single course a single instructor is probably the worst thing you can do as i said in the end you have to be your own instructor and it's good to look for videos but pretty much pick and choose if you've paid someone 100 rupees doesn't mean you have to extract all the value from that course or you know from that video just pick and choose the points that you need and whatever you get from this video great if you don't get something go to a different video in fact it's best you decentralize your learning as much as possible so that you're not dependent on a single resource no single course can teach you anything no single video can teach you everything courses are probably even though i have a course probably the worst way to learn something they're the best way to understand what's being done or what topics to learn or get a high level and then unless you code yourself 95 percent of your learning will happen if you code yourself if you just follow along a tutorial don't even watch the tutorial it's pretty much of no use you're going to forget the same thing tomorrow right last point adding blind spots to your learning journey you can follow along whatever tutorial you want but at some point add a blind spot add a restriction that you're not allowed to look at this video turn off your wi-fi if need be and try to code the same thing yourself initially you should learn how to memorize syntax a bit so you can write it independently. When you're switching from one language to another, you can always Google the syntax of the new language. But the first language that you're writing, you need to become, you know, independent enough to code yourself. If you're not doing it, then, you know, you'll always be dependent on AIs to write your code, which is good. Even I do it. But, you know, not the first thing you should start from. The first thing you should start from is you can impress people by, you know, bootstrapping whatever you want you know writing code really fast so for that you need to memorize syntax for that add blind spots so you forget the syntax you try to remember it if you don't remember it you google it come back to it and you know write code yourself worst thing you can do follow a tutorial slightly better thing you can do code along while you're following a tutorial even better thing you can do adding a blind spot and googling when you have a problem and the best thing you can do is code the complete thing yourself you can reach here trust me if you build the same application 20 times the 21st time you don't have to google even unless you reach a very weird use case but a lot of programming is a very similar code you have to write again and again it's pretty much masduri if i'm being honest you're just a laborer only you're sitting in a pretty cushy office but at the same time you know you're writing a lot of application logic code and you will never become a good laborer by looking at another laborer how they're picking up stuff you have to you know pick it up yourself that's the high level hopefully this video was insightful you will fall into these pitfalls if you're starting to program and if i'm being honest a lot of things i've said here but a lot of these things you'll just learn via experience so high level start to code and you know practice a lot keyword bajao and once you do that i think that's the best way to learn all right with that let's end it i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye